What's up everyone, it's Prometheus, and today, back by popular demand, we are talking about home roasting. As you may already know, roasting is a pretty dense topic, but one of the most talked about and important parts of roasting is creating a roast profile. This ensures that you're able to repeat that same roast over and over again to get the same quality and taste in your cup. In a previous video, way back when, I showed you how to create a roast profile on a full-size commercial roaster, but that's not really approachable by your average coffee enthusiast or average person who wants to try this at home, so we're taking the roasting process out of the commercial roastery and putting it into your kitchen. To do this, we are breaking out one of my favorite coffee tools, the affordable and easy to use Hive Roaster with the Data Dome add-on. This add-on for the Hive comes equipped with a thermocouple installed through the dome and down into the drum, which is where you're going to be pulling your bean temperature. This thermocouple is then attached to a fidget or other type of temperature enabled data bridge that will give you readings both inside and outside of the roaster. In this video, I'll be using Artisan Roaster Scope, which is a free to download software. So if you do snag it, consider donating a few dollars as it's a super robust application and has a massive amount of customization options and they really deserve just, you know, some money for their effort. Connecting the Hive to Artisan or another data logger is super simple. Just plug it into the cord from your data bridge to your computer and then launch whichever application you're gonna be roasting with. Once Artisan is loaded, clicking on in the upper right hand corner of your toolbar should then connect to the Hive and you should see your temperatures pop up on the right hand side. Now, if we're looking at the temperature readings, the ET is your environmental temperature, which for me is pulled directly from the fidget itself and is basically just the temperature in my kitchen. The BT figure is bean temperature and that's pretty self-explanatory, but if you have no beans in there, it's actually still just the internal temperature of your drum. Below that, you'll see the alpha character and BT. That is your rate of rise. This shows a numerical value of how many degrees up or down per minute your temperature is headed, and this will be something we'll watch very closely during the entire roast. In an effort to run as close to a traditional roaster as possible, I'm going to preheat the drum. This is what's called a charge temperature. Think of this as preheating your oven before putting in your cookies. With the hive, this is optional, but I've found the best results in the cup from this method, plus it reduces overall roast time. I find that using a batch of 110 grams gives me the best possible movement in the roaster. This is important as any beans sitting on the hot surface of the roaster for too long without moving will definitely end up charring, causing a spike in your profile, and you'll definitely end up tasting it in your final cup. With this roast, I'm gonna hit the start button at about 220 degrees, and at about 250 degrees, I'm going to drop in the green coffee. I'm gonna be pouring them in using the pitcher through the exhaust port, which is the simplest way and doesn't require touching a hot dome or stopping for too long. If you have a funnel or something like that, that could definitely help and keep you moving while you're pouring in your green coffee. Now this brings me to one of the challenges of using the hive with a roasting software because it's hard to constantly move that hive while also hitting buttons accurately. As you can see, I missed the charge button on Artisan on my first try, but if you look closely, you can see the charge is at about 250 degrees and it's right when that bean line starts to take a dip as the green coffee is getting added to the chamber. At this point, we're entering the first phase of the roast, which is called drying. During this phase, green coffee loses its moisture and begins to turn yellow. Now, if we look back over to the right-hand side of the screen, we can see the rate of rise number increasing from the negatives into the positives. Now, as we keep our eye on the bean temperature, you'll notice from here, you'll see it dip down as the room temperature coffee enters the roaster and equalizes with the drum itself. This is called the turning point. From there, we are gonna be headed upwards and onwards. Now, as we watch the blue rate of rise line, I allow it to peak naturally and begin coming down before making any temperature adjustments. From there, I'll just be keeping an eye on it and try to assist its natural downward drop as smoothly as possible. At around 300 degrees, most green coffee starts to turn yellow. And for this one, about 307 degrees, it turns fully yellow. And I mark that as drying end in the Artisan app. As the roast goes on, we need to make sure we continue to pay close attention to the rate of rise. Ideally, I want that to have a nice, relatively even and continuous drop, not any crazy spike down or up, just a nice smooth roll all the way down, which is easier said than done. With the hive, you can quickly manage the bean temperature and rate of rise by moving the unit closer or further from the flame, as well as adjusting the burner level. But it's very easy to go too far, 
and cause a big spike or a drop. So keep your adjustments small because you'll notice that adjustment happening pretty quickly in real time. Now for most coffees, first crack happens around 400 degrees. So for this one, 385 is a little early, but every coffee is different. It depends on lots of things like moisture and temperatures and densities, and that's just a different video altogether. But we've entered the first crack phase, so I'm gonna mark that in Artisan as first crack start, which is arguably one of the most important phases because we're gonna begin development. So at this point, we just need to stay the course with a nice, even declining rate of rise. Now this can be easier said than done because first crack can cause either a flick up or a crash downwards depending on the coffee. So keeping an eye on the rate of rise and making temperature changes can help mitigate those as much as possible. The length of the development phase is totally up to you and depends on your tastes and what you want out of that coffee. For me, I'm aiming for a medium roast as I did with the full production roast of this same coffee. Once it hits about a minute and a half of development, it's time to drop it into the cooling screen and do that as quickly as possible. Just like roasting the coffee, the cooling process works best with constant movement. And stirring it will also help cool things off just a little bit quicker. We want to make sure we get it down to room temperature in about 4 minutes. It'll continue to roast if it just sits there and it's hot. Once it hits a warm temperature where it's warm to the touch, I usually pour it onto a paper towel and lay it out into an even layer and begin separating any obvious defects like Quakers, chipped beans, and shells. Now that I have what I would consider a good profile, Great job. the question is, can I follow this profile and create the same experience in the cup? After all, that's the whole point of having a profile and being able to see these temperatures and times. After a few attempts, I have my best result, so let's go through that. As you can see from looking at this profile, there are some differences. Getting exactly matching profiles on a commercial roaster is hard enough. Definitely takes a lot of skill and time and understanding, but adding into the fact that with the hive, everything is done by hand, there's just so many more variables involved that it's pretty tough, but we'll see what this actually comes out like in the cup and see how close they actually are. But one good thing is we can see that even with the differences, a lot of the roast milestones are pretty close. The charge temperatures are right around the same point at about 250 degrees. The phases of the roast aren't too far off from each other, ranging at about a max of 5%, which isn't ideal, but pretty good considering just all the variables involved here. As you can see, the total roast time for both of these profiles is one second different, but there is a 25 second gap between the two development times. Now, that can happen for a lot of reasons. The issue for this one is the drying phase took much longer in the second profile than it did in the first, which makes sense because you can see that it has a lower peak temperature as well as a corresponding rate of rise. I was able to make up for that by keeping a much more consistent roast temperature throughout, which shows in less peaks and valleys in the actual profile itself. But the real test will be how these coffees actually taste in the cup. So after about 48 hours, I put out five of the roasts to really see how they came out. Within the groups, there was the main profile that I showed you in the beginning, the follow attempt that I also showed, another follow attempt, a cold start, which means I put the beans in just with the drum at room temperature and then went straight to heat, and the charred batch that I showed you earlier on. After going through each of the coffees by smelling the grinds, breaking the crust, and tasting each coffee multiple times over the course of nearly 50 minutes, I found that all three profile attempts were pretty similar. But the smoothest profile, which was the follow attempt I showed you, ended up with the best and most balanced cup and tasted very close to the cup produced from the full-size roaster. I have to say, after roasting about four pounds of coffee in just a single day while using the Data Dome, I'm hooked. The standard hive is fun, but this is just so much more engaging when you actually have the challenge of watching things happen on a screen. As a nerd for all things data, being able to see what's happening inside the roaster really gives you broader control over the outcome, as well as the option for repeatability. All in all, this setup will cost you less than $200, and it'll pay for itself in entertainment, exercise, and roasted coffee, so I don't really see a downside. But with that said, now's the time for me to wrap this one up. Don't forget to drop your questions down below if you have questions about the hive, home roasting, and I'm also curious to know who's roasting at home, what you're roasting on, if you're using software or time, temperature, and sound, or, you know, any other questions, comments, concerns, happy to hear them, and of course, I'll see y'all next week.
A big thank you to my July Patreons, Ads, James B, David, Hamad, Christopher, John K, Squeegee, Roe, Brian, Lisa, Thomas B, Andre, Rick Racer, Sean, Joey, Thomas S, Noel Spookus, Bound Coffee, Mika, Samantha, Nathan, Aiden, Jonathan, Claire, Stephen, James K, Josh, Andrew, Ollie, Ninja Warrior Coffee, Testing123, Horison, Bobby, Corey C, Curry, Dave B, Jerry, Marcus, Nicholas, Paul, RD, Tim, Matt, Tony, Zachary V, Tyler, Jonathan B, and UK Espresso. And of course, a big thank you to the Barista and Barback tiers. If you want any information on my Patreon, there's a link in the description and in the upper right hand corner right now. And lastly, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Follow my Instagram at Prometheus, my blog at Prometheus.com, my coffee at littlegiant.coffee, and as always, stay caffeinated. Pony boy.